welcome to this pixel mates tutorial in this pixel mates tutorial i'm going to show you how to do the dispersion or the dissolve effect that i did indeed cover last week in in, in light app so anybody that's seen that you will know the sort of end result that we're going to get a few people sent me a message it sent me messages asking me can we do this in pixelmator yes we can do it in pixelmator and i'm going to show you how so let's get over into pixelmator and carry on so in pixelmate you can see that i've got the same images that i used last week or the same templates that i used last week um, and any resources that you need for this and I will actually show you how to make after, later on one of these um, Templates as well, um, but any resources that you need for this you will find in the link in the description to this video so The way we do this dispersion effect We go over here to our tools now if you haven't got your tools on your sprint on your screen press command 1 to hide or show the tools or you could go to the view up here in your toolbar and um, hide or show tools here. But I just think command and one, keyboard shortcuts, um, it's a good way to work, it's an, uh, um, an efficient way to work, so get used to them. So then we're gonna go to this warp tool down here, and I'm gonna select the warp tool itself. There's a few more tools, but I'm gonna select warp. So once we've got this warp tool, you'll notice I have got up here in my um, toolbar a diameter and a strength slider. So just make sure your strength is around 70 to 75%. Don't worry too much about the strength. And then the diameter, I'm gonna ramp up a little bit to around um, 185, 186, whatever, between 180 and 200 um, in diameter. And then with my background layer, let me just double click to rename it, background layer to make for ease. Um, I am going selected, I am going to, so make sure you've got the background layer selected warp tool selected i'm then going to left click and drag out um, and warp this this image itself like so now obviously dependent on the strength if i put my strength up a little bit it takes away the feathering a little bit but don't worry too much about it so if you want to feather something, just um, turn down the strength a little bit and it will feather it out like so. So I'm just gonna, going to keep this like this for now and then I'm going to just do a little bit down here. Just warp a little bit here. Just so we can get a nice, a nice dispersion effect. So, so I'm happy with this um, sort of warp effect that I've got at the moment. So I'm gonna go back to my selection tool and, um, and then I'm going to change the order of these layers. So I'm just gonna drag the background layer below the confetti layer and I'm gonna turn the confetti layer off for now just so I can um, show you what I'm going to do. So with this confetti layer selected, turned it back on and going to position it over half of the screen like so. And then I'm simply gonna to go to my blending mode here in my layers, my blending mode, and lighten this blend. So you will see it breaks up, it breaks up the actual image that I have just, um, the warp effect that I've just created below, but gives the effect that the body is sort of dissolving away. So there are a few more um, blending options that we have. You could screen blend it. And if you notice on the screen blend, we will use this. It sort of um, fades this first part in, whereas the lighten will just lighten the screen. The screen blend, if you look here, sort of blends as it falls in. And then we also have the color dodge, which allows some of the color through the linear dodge which takes the um, doesn't allow the color um, through um, in great effect but around the lines you have to look really carefully and then we have the light and color which sort of um, is also a good um, a good blending mode that we could use 
So I haven't done anything, I've just kept this on around half. Now I'm going to just put this blending mode back to lighten and then I'm going to press with my confetti selected command and F on my keyboard. So now I get the option to rotate this little anchor, you look at my cursor, this little rotate um, just to um, manipulate this confetti the way I want it to be manipulated like so. So now underneath this layers pane here you'll see I've got a little OK button at the top right hand side. I'm going to click OK. So that's my first sort of effect. And now I am going to just keep copying this layer and pasting it in a different um, in a different way. So I'm going to duplicate, right click, highlight, duplicate. So now I've got a copy of the original layer and I can actually move this one down. Now the trick is not to see these lines. You see these hard lines here? Not to see these hard lines here. And the way we can do that is we could use the screen blend or we could use the lighten blend and it will take away the not perfectly look you can still see the hard lines but what we can do if we went back to lighten again we could just sort of match up this blend so you can't see the lines yourself so this is quite effective and we're going to duplicate again and then move this one just so we're it's hard to see the lines like so and then duplicate again and we could even resize it by dragging these little anchor points like so and we could even rotate it again so then that gets rid of our lines click OK because we've reshaped it and then I'm going to duplicate that again but drag it down this time down here somewhere like so so I'm happy with my dispersion effect. I could add a couple of more, a couple of more um, um, of the duplicates. But all I'm going to do is make sure my top confetti copy is selected. I'm then going to go to my bottom one, press the shift key on my button to select all of them above. And then I'm going to right click and create a group. So now we can turn on and off this group like so. So let me show you, because that is pretty much the dispersion effect in itself. Quite a good trick, what you could do, I suppose. You could take this background layer and duplicate the background layer. Now with the top background layer, the top background copy, so let's just double click this and call it top BG. So that's my top background layer um, selected. I could go to my, um, my effects layer, um, the way of my effects tools. We can go view hide or show effects or we could use the command um, the, the command three keyboard shortcut and um, using it like so and then we're going to go to this glass so we could go make sure all effects are selected and if you want to search just G L A S and it will show you all the ones that match your uh, match your spelling and then with the top background layer selected just double click the glass and this will indeed apply that effect to the layer that you've got selected or you could drag and drop onto the layers pane there or drag it like so command and Z to cancel that or drag and drop direct to the image like so or I just prefer to double click with the layer selected and then we've got this glass distortion effect so what this does around the edges here you see it gives the same as the dissolve effect so we could just turn it down a little bit tone it down a little bit like so and click to I've got 116 you can just double click that and type it in like so I've typed in 117 and we'll leave it at that with the top background layer top background selected I'm gonna to go to my blending again and then you could go to lighten the screen so it takes it away a little bit or you could go to the screen itself which would brighten the screen or lighten the color like so but if you want this speckled sort of dissolve effect on this side of that person or this side of the image that you're using also the way you would do it is the way I just showed you with the glass effect so you turn on or turn off if you didn't want to use that glass effect so that's just another okay let me show you now how to make your own sort of confetti background but we'll do it a little bit different we'll use I don't know smoke or sparks or something 
um, just to show you how you could make it yourself. So I'm just going to turn this um, confetti background off. In fact, I'll turn all the backgrounds off so we're just left with a blank. And I'm going to click new layer and just drag that new layer up to the top of our screen. And then I'm going to get my paint bucket tool, get my color white. So select the snow color. If you haven't got your colors on the screen, shift command and C will hide and show your colors. Shift command and C. Paint bucket tool selected, white selected or snow and just left click into that space of that with a background layer selected and it will give you a white um, background. And then I'm going to go to this selection tool here and I'm just going to drag out um, a rectangle of about this size on the right hand side of that new layer. And then I'm going to select this licorice, go to my paint bucket tool, licorice, sorry. So paint bucket tool, then licorice with the background layer selected and left click into that area. Press command and D to deselect that area. So we just have a licorice or a black strip on the right hand side of our white background. I'm then gonna go to my um, paintbrush tool and I'm going to need my paintbrushes selected, um, viewable. Um, on the screen so I'm going to press command and 4 and it shows the brushes now with the brushes what we can do we go to our tools and we could select um, a sort of theme we will keep it on the sparkle theme and we will yeah we will um, yeah we'll keep we'll keep with the spark so we'll we'll keep these sparks here so I could change the diameter of the sparks but all I'm simply going to do with my licorice color selected again. I'm just gonna left click and make sparks like so. The trouble with the sparks, some of them um, are or do become, do become white. And that's just a trait of the sparks. I wonder what happens if I use this. See, this is quite, um, so I could change the diameter of this. And this is, yeah, this is a little bit better, this whirlwind thing. So I'm just pressing Command and Z to undo. And then I'm going to just use this sort of um, this whirlwind type of effect, like so. Um, and then um, and then that is, that is that really. I'm just going to make this a little bit darker along this line here. But that is that. I'm going to go back to my selection tool. Now turn this background layer back on down here with the top layer that I've just created selected I'm just going to change the blending to lighten again so you will see we get the same sort of effect and all we would keep needing to do is duplicating this layer and moving it around you see we get this so with without any sort of um, attention to detail they're off paid I, I would change this slightly to, to be a bit more dispersed here so we've got more gaps here but you get the idea um, of how easily to create and you could do this with smoke as well to sort of um, just just a little bit of trial and error to create your own um, background template as well but for now that's the dispersion you could add possibly a couple of filters to that whatever it is you wanted to do I'll probably do it at the end of the video I hope you've enjoyed this um, go ahead, do what you want to do with this, but um, but um, I'll, I'll catch you again soon. Thanks for watching and thanks for your support. Bye.